Hey everybody, happy new year. This is the KCP community meeting January 3rd, 2023. Uh, it's good to see everybody back uh, for those of you who are here. So if you do have any topics, uh, please just feel free to hit the raise hand button in, uh, in Meet and I will moderate and call on you. And uh, MJ, you had the first one before we started recording, um, if you wouldn't mind asking it again. Yeah, so did the community or individuals had any ideas of the how the KCP will be deployed in production? Meaning, I know we had the Helm repository, which doesn't quite scale in the like sharded models. And is there any plans for like installer or asset generation concepts, things like that? Very good question. We know that we need uh some amount of scripting automation whatever makes the most sense and is the easiest to maintain uh we don't have anything in place yet other than that helm chart that you mentioned which is not the greatest at scaling and then we also have the go code for the test server and sharded test server that at least show the pieces that are necessary that they basically mirror to a degree what's in that Helm chart for getting certificates created and cube configs and whatnot. I do think that um, we definitely would benefit if there were folks who were interested in going down a route of exploring what sort of tooling would be helpful, or even before we talk about tooling, what would you put in a series of operational runbooks, so to speak, for the types of operations that you would typically need to do when you're administering a production quality multi-shard KCP setup? So that would include things like starting from scratch. How do you get the first shard created and the front proxy how you add more shards, delete shards, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I think we could definitely um, have some folks work on that if, if y'all are interested. And then once we get the needs documented, we can start looking at tooling options. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, so I was just wondering um, what the plan was for the KCP manifest directory. So in the main KCP repo, there are some manifests um, I tried testing them a while back and didn't actually get a fully functional environment, but I just wondered if anyone is actually using those and if that's potentially a helpful starting point. Obviously, it's a fairly static setup, but it could be used as a kind of way to show how to deploy a, a multi-shard environment when the time comes. Um, and obviously, that's really got the proxy um, and other pieces um, and search generation and stuff like that. Some of that stuff is... I think we've squeaked by without maintaining it because we haven't put as much uh, pressure on the multi-shard yet, but part of validating that multi-shard actually functions is gonna be having probably something like that directory in the repo running in tests and actually working, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I tried it just before the break and it didn't look too far from working. There was something weird about the cert generation that I think probably needs some attention, the, the common name. Um, needs to be uh, set correctly. And there's a couple of other things I run into, but with a bit more effort, it looks like, you know, that could be um, a starting point perhaps. But I wondered if anyone else was looking at it. Yeah, MJ, you've got your hand up again, go ahead. Yeah, so I've basically been exploring this a bit on the, on the side. So Helm charts, there is a PR, which is was closest to what was working before the refactoring. And basically now it's it's broken after refactoring and needs redoing. But the main problem, which I just ran recently using the Helm one, is when you're trying to replicate anything closer to sharded version, like two shards front proxy, you run into issue of the assets generation, like shared assets, certificates, shared cube configs, and things like that, where Helm basically is the wrong tool for the job. It can deliver the content into the clusters, but when it comes to generating these things, we use the cert manager to do those things, which implies 
it's in the cluster and you need to now start in pulling out and in. This is why I was raised the question about the installer and potentially maybe initially just simple asset generation entry point, which we could reuse in the test server. Basically, there's a lot of shared code in the test server, which could move to the separate utility to generate certificates and uh, like mappings. And after that, we can start pivoting from there. I don't know, maybe that's a good early start. And after that, it might evolve to something, it might not. Yeah, I think if you have some time and maybe could write up just a short uh, series of steps that you think would make sense, like what you were just saying, uh, we could take a look at that and iterate. Would people prefer more PR, hack and D? Uh, I mean, you could do a discussion in GitHub. You could do a Google Doc or hack MD. I think for collaborative editing, I find Google Docs easier to associate a comment back to the text than I do in hack MD. But yeah. whatever's, whatever you're most comfortable with is fine. Cool. OK. Cool. Thanks. Any other topics for today? Maybe general updates where we have now with the refactoring. Yeah, I'm going to get there. Uh, so that, that's a good, good segue. Good question. Uh, so we merged the giant chunk of work that refactors how we do workspaces. Uh, so if you uh, don't remember or, or didn't see the discussions about that before, I'll try and briefly summarize. So we used to have a cluster workspace type, which was real and stored in etcd. And then we had a workspace type, which was fake or virtual. And when you requested a workspace, we looked up the cluster workspace, made a copy of it, converted into the workspace, and gave it back to you. From an end user perspective, everyone was supposed to be using workspaces. From a controller author perspective, you would, were supposed to be using cluster workspaces. And that was confusing. It was hard to describe the differences between the two. And we were trying to um, simplify that to one degree. The current code in main is focused primarily on workspaces, which are real now. They are stored in etcd as workspaces. We temporarily still have cluster workspaces. So we've reversed what was virtual. So cluster workspaces are now virtual. The only reason they still exist is because we had some end-to-end -end tests or other code that was relying on cluster workspaces. And we decided to merge the changes in their current form and then do follow-up PRs to get rid of cluster workspaces. So in the end, when we're done, there will be workspaces. They will be real, stored in etcd. And that's what you will interact with if you're trying to create them or list them or whatnot. We have added a new type called logical cluster. It is a CRD, and the presence of a logical cluster CR means that there is actually a workspace or what we, you know, what we're calling a logical cluster in terms of storage in etcd. Um, so this codifies that we intend to store content in etcd where everything is grouped under a certain cluster name. Uh, the logical cluster is a singleton in terms of a CR. Every single, um, every single logical cluster is named cluster. The, uh, the parent or like where this cluster CR is created, like it used to be you'd see 
root, root compute, root my org, my team. You'd have the home workspaces and all of that would be encoded in the URLs that you use to interact with workspaces. And it would also be encoded in the key segments in etcd. Now, when you create a workspace called foo, that ends up being placed in a path inside of etcd where we translate foo to, I forget the exact algorithm, but it's a base 36 SHA-224 encoded name or something along those lines. Uh, and so actually I have, I think I have an example. Yeah, here we go. Um, so there was a comment in the code saying all this. Is that comment been updated? I assume it is accurate. Yes. Um, so I just pasted into chat. Um, this is the logical cluster named cluster inside of you see it's C A V F U U one something or other. Uh, this is actually for the root colon compute workspace. So root compute looks like this. And um, the system, KCP itself, takes care of creating these logical clusters for you. So when you say, hey, KCP, please create a workspace called root compute, KCP will take care of creating this logical cluster for you automatically. And uh, the presence of this particular logical cluster means that it's valid. And then the system will also create the cluster role and cluster role binding that are necessary to give you as the creator of your workspace cluster admin to it. And all of the RBAC has now moved inside of this particular CAVFUU portion of the path. And so uh, you have full control to give other people access to your workspace without having to go to the parent to create RBAC resources in there. Um, there is a list of follow-ups. Let me see if I can get them real quick. Uh, with me while I pull this up. Here we go. All right, let me share my screen. All right, so the pull request that merged is 2510. And there's a list of follow-ups for what we need to do. Um, this is not necessarily complete. This was just a bunch of things that uh, we found during code review. So if you are interested in helping out and you want to work on any one of these items, please uh, let us know either in Slack or by commenting on the PR, and we'll put your GitHub handle at the beginning of whichever task you're interested in. And then um, hopefully we'll get all of this stuff done. All right, what questions, if any, do you all have or comments? So I wasn't following what you said by uh... Two questions first. So this logical cluster is I take it is is virtual or is it is it it's real? It's stored. Um it's stored. Uh, and you said it's a singleton? I didn't follow that part. Yes. So it's a singleton within the scope of its parent. So um uh, da, 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 da. let me just All right, so I am going to, if I say create workspace root compute, where workspace is a v1 beta 1 type. So this is um, actually tenancy v1 beta 1. If I say I want to do this, then what happens is KCP internals creates a logical cluster in etcd in here. And where is the name, is the encoded cluster name? 
uh, exclusively for root compute. And cluster is the name of the logical cluster. If I were to create a workspace called uh, Happy New Year, then we would end up with something that looks like some other value here. And then if I were, and so this is also like, it's a singleton within the context of. So in key space, it's, it's a singleton. In the key NCD, space. NCD, NCD, it's right. So it's not a singleton as far as uh, everybody that's not looking, everybody except the people looking at KC, at NCD, it's not a singleton. Okay. It, yeah, I, I, I mean, it, it's a singleton within the, the this portion. So you'll never have... Right, but almost everybody is not dealing with etcd directly, right? Everybody else is dealing yeah. with APIs and high-level interfaces. So the question there is, is this object, what is it? Um, it's it's one-to-one -one with the workspace that you're in. Yeah. So and inside the context of a workspace, you ask for logical clusters, you get one and only one, and only ever one. Oh, okay, so that's another statement then. So you're saying within a logical within a workspace which corresponds with a logical cluster in terms of i mean before this crd was introduced we were using in plain english logical cluster as a term right yes. and that, that there, those are uh there's one of those for every workspace plus a few more system ones um now are you telling me that in every one of those logical clusters plain english there is one logical cluster cr yes that's what i meant by singleton it's always called cluster Okay, so it's not just a statement about etcd. It, it is also a statement about the Kube API. It yeah. is a singleton inside itself. So yes. it's self-referential. And it provides a, a stable, unique identifier and is tied to the lifecycle of all other objects in this uh, key prefix. I won't pretend to understand all you said, but this was only supposed to be a summary anyway, so I'll stop there. Yeah. Um, I think we'll probably take some time to somehow illustrate these concepts in a consumable documentation with drawings sort of thing. Yes. That would yeah, be the, now that the workspace refactoring has landed, uh, I'm hoping to spend a good portion of my time working on approachability and understanding for concepts. Um, so we've talked about splitting the repo up and making the readme clearer. Uh, I want to work on that this month, uh, as well as making it so that it's as easy as possible to understand uh, if you are a user, what do you interact with and what concepts do you need to know? If you are a developer working on, uh, on multi-workspace controllers, what do, concepts do you need to know and what are you interact, what are you interacting with and so on so um in summary the refactor has landed it is a breaking change or a series of breaking changes so uh if you have existing at cd data from kcp 0 0.10 before the refactor uh, you will need to back it up and restore it if you want to keep it or just wipe that CD. Um, the Helm chart has not been updated to uh, work appropriately with some of these changes. Uh, Steve Hardy and I were working, what, for the past hour and a half uh, on some, like, working through what sort of changes we need. So. Uh, look for those over the next few days, I would imagine. All right. Uh, anybody else have any questions or comments or topics? All right. Well, I'm uh, welcome to. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a good new year. Um, hopefully, we'll get back in the swing of things. And I know I have a whole bunch of PR reviews and things to deal with. So uh, it's good to see everybody. 
And I hope you have a good rest of your week. And uh, I'll see you next week. See you. Thank you.